Hey there and welcome back to the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. This is Eva and today's quick tip tutorials we are going to look at network surfaces. So network surface is a very efficient way to work with advanced freeform surfaces to create uh, advanced freeform surfaces. Um, there are a few rules and when you know them it's very easy to create something with the network surface command. Generally speaking, uh, your objects have to have four edges. Uh, you have a side A, B, C and D. You'll see that in your menu toolbar when you hit enter. And you have profile curves uh, generally coming from either edge curve, so either opposite edge curve. So what we have here is a setup with six different ways in which you can, in essence, create a, a surface with a network surface tool. Uh, the first one is your most basic and also highlights the principle very well. You have four basic edge curves all joined at the, at the, the, the endpoints. And then you have two profile curves, each spanning from one edge to the opposite edge that will give you the shape of your surface. So if we select all, all six curves here and we press enter, what we're going to get is our menu toolbar uh, for creating a surface from curved networks. And you'll find in that you have the tolerance for your edge curves and your interior curves and your edge matching. Your edge curves, the, the more, more, uh, or the, the, the lower you go in number, the more tolerance it makes for your complexity of edge. Uh, so if you have a complicated looking uh, edge, a couple of edge curves, you would need a very high tolerance. And with the interior curves, you can up your number of ISO curves on your surface and allow for more complex uh, um, build up of your freeform surface depending on what your profile curves look like. So we hit enter and we've got a pretty basic surface here. Um, uh, I've been working with Rhino History on. So now I've got a bit of a parametricism on my, on my curve. So if I go ahead and push and pull a couple of curves here and there, it's going to alter the surface. It's always handy to have Rhino history on when you're developing or in concept phase. Same for my edge curves. If I <coughs> rebuild my edge curve uh, uh, with three or four points and a curve degree of three, and uh, um, now alter the curve here and there with using my points, um, you can see that my surface is following. Uh, we'll try to stick to that curve as much as possible, but this all depends on what your settings were when you entered your tolerance levels and your edge matching in your menu toolbar. So let's get on to the next setup. The next setup, I've eliminated two of my edge curves and I only have two edge curves but those two edge curves have corners and what I've done is my profile curves are actually going from one point to another point where my two edge curves meet that's because what used to be there would have been my third and fourth side so it's like taking a dishcloth and holding it together on the edge points and you can see here when you create the surface uh, it has a hard time dealing with the corners of those curves, those two side curves, um, namely because it's not a, it's not where an edge meets another edge or a curve uh, meets another curve. It is a curve throughout. It's trying to deal with it as a curve throughout. So here we would up our tolerance as much as possible so we can follow that point so make your tolerance even higher on your edge curves and your interior curves 
and our edge matching well if we have it on position it will try as hard as possible to keep it following that curve whereas loose will give you more an estimate so you can see the surface has a lot of ISO curves so let's hit enter and let's move on to the next setup so the next setup is a lot like the first setup I'm just quickly zooming in here to have a good look at our corners and wait just show you how this ISO curve is actually coming out of the corner and going over to the other corner it's, it's a, like a marquee's shape the third setup is a lot like the first one we've just shaped it a little bit like a trapeze and by bringing in the corners on one of the sides so it will work very similar you have your four sides and uh, you'll see a very strange number in the menu toolbar um, in the in the uh, surface from curve network toolbar uh, that's pretty much the highest you can go with a tolerance when it gives you that calculation This is a very simple surface, not a lot of ISO curves. The three last objects are all based on circular shapes. And the first one the first one is actually just basically a circle that's been exploded into four arches. It works the same as the very first, except that our curves are now curved curve three degree and um, have an arch instead of being straight lines and as you can see that very simple surface um, with a low count of ISO curves a beautiful surface to start modeling something with the second one again works a lot like the second one in the square set uh, only difference is that it's two round arches semicircles but you can see how it's like a globe where your one curve meets the other curves on one point and the opposite ISO curves you are actually spanning over the edges and the final surface is a three-sided not like the trapeze it's actually missing one edge and uh, let's have a look at the result of this one here we've just pinched one edge curve and this is the perfect setup to make a little heart Just push that point in, and there you go. Push the other point out. By essence, it's good to start with a low ISO curve count because your surfaces will get more complex as you work with them. So try to keep it simple from the beginning and uh, let it progressively grow complex by itself. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something today and hope you enjoyed it um, have a great day